some music on here in the background. So what did I do? Yeah, I had to leave Ukraine. I first went there in 2018 and uh, went there to look for property in Odessa on the Black Sea. That's some pretty good prices, equivalent to Spain. I also went to Spain two years before that and looked for property. I was going to buy a villa down near Cadiz, about 150000 for a really nice little house. But I decided I, on my bucket list, I wanted also to check out Ukraine and see what was happening there. I didn't, I just knew that, well, of course, the world-renowned, good-looking woman of Ukraine and also low prices. And I thought, oh, that'd be a good place maybe to retire or buy property, maybe buy a house or an apartment in Ukraine and a, and a house or apartment in Spain and just travel, spend part of the year in Ukraine, part of the year in Spain. But I ended up going to Ukraine and uh, actually living there in 2019. In 2018, I was just there for three weeks. I studied Russian, which is the language of the Odessa province. And I had a two-week course with one of my friends from California. And uh, so I learned Russian for two weeks and then spent another week there just checking out the city of Odessa. And then uh, I met some people, uh, dated a, a woman a few times, went on a few dates. And then about a year later, in 2019, July 2019, I moved back to Odessa, Ukraine. And uh, I got a residence permit, registered a business gave myself a work permit because I also appointed myself director of the Ukrainian company. And so I got a residence, a temporary residence card. And all this took like 2,500 bucks, lawyer fees and administration fees. So since July, 2019, I've, I had been living in Ukraine, and it was pretty cool. Um, saved a lot of money. Probably saved, I would say, per year, I probably saved around thirty-five to forty thousand dollars on yearly expenses. Because before that, I had been living in California, which is one of the most expensive states in the United States. So I saved a lot of money. Um, also went to a private hospital there for surgery. I had a really bad health problem and I must give praise and much gratitude and thanks to Ukrainian doctors, nurses and surgeons in this private hospital in Odessa, Ukraine, who essentially uh, in many ways, saved my life. It wasn't that fatal of a problem, but it could have been. I mean, it could have been really bad, but they uh, did a really good operation. So anyways, um, come around. It was around winter of 2020, 2021. My friend in the United States just goes, dude, you got to get out of Ukraine immediately. Just, you know, go to Hawaii or some tropical country. Because he, he likes tropical countries. So he projected that onto me. Oh, go to Hawaii or go to Brazil or Barbados. I thought, dude, I can't really go. At that time, I was actually, I had health problems and I was sort of bedridden most of the day, so I couldn't get out. I couldn't get on a plane or do any traveling anyways. But he was adamant and said, oh, the, the Russians are going to invade. And, but this was one year before the invasion. And I go, well, I can't do it. I'll, you know, I'll, I acknowledge your warnings, but I'm not really sure about this. Oh, well. So then a year later, started getting the warnings again 
from my friend, from the American news media, from other, some members of my family that were following the situation with the troop buildup on the Ukrainian border. And uh, it was really strange because I asked my Ukrainian friends and foreign friends in Ukraine. I said, what do you think? Do you think there's going to be an invasion? Mm, only one person said slightly likely, maybe, possibly, but I don't think so. They thought the American diplomatic efforts would be effective and Putin would have the common sense not to invade. But he did, of course. And uh, no one I knew at the time, at the end of January, it was January 2022, no one was leaving. None of my friends were leaving, either Ukrainian or foreign friends. No, no, no one was leaving. But there was one acquaintance, an American from California, that left Ukraine around the same time I did. He went to Moldova. Me, I left and went to Warsaw on January 28th. When I left, I felt rather stupid because no one was leaving. There was no sense of panic. Um, my favorite bartender in my favorite bar, this beautiful Ukrainian woman, um, asked me uh, what I was concerned about. She said I looked sort of worried. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm worried about a Russian invasion. And this was like November 2021. And she was very kind and maternal almost and said, oh, don't worry about it. There won't be a Russian invasion. And I trusted her. I was very reassured because she's Ukrainian. And she's about... 30 years old, and she's lived with this situation for the past decade. And she just thought, well, that's just Putin's posturing. It's just a political theater, and they're not really going to invade. Don't worry about it. They're always bringing troops to the border. And, you know, she, did, she wasn't worried at all. So I was reassured. This is sometime in November 2021. So I thought, I'll just relax. I won't worry about it. Then again, in December, started getting more warnings. Uh, Hannity on Fox News looked into the camera and said, if you're an American and you're in Ukraine, get, get out immediately. And uh, so I took it with a grain of salt. And then uh, the Secretary of State or one of the speaker of the, um, the White House spokesman said, uh, Americans should leave now. Uh, we've given the warning for Americans to leave on commercial, commercially available flights or any other form of transportation, and uh, you sh should consider, that's the word that you should consider leaving. But then the words became stronger, and it was, Americans should leave, and uh, we've given the warning to American citizens that uh, the American government will not be doing an evacuation of American citizens in Ukraine. So it's your responsibility to leave the country now. No military evacuation of Americans in Ukraine. So I pieced all that info together. Plus, my sisters were telling me to get out of Ukraine. My friend, who had predicted the invasion a year beforehand, so it said, get out. So I just, I left. I was reluctant to leave. I thought it was stupid. I thought I was being overly cautious. So I go, I go to Warsaw and I was, after three weeks, I was getting ready to fly back to Ukraine and preparing a COVID pass, re-entry pass and preparing, um, trying to get a flight and get a COVID test so I could fly back into Ukraine. And, and then a few days later, the Russians invaded. So I was stuck. I thought, oh, well, what should I do? So, so that sucked. And then the week after that, so many Ukrainian refugees came into Warsaw that it was hard to get an Airbnb. In fact, the Airbnb website was malfunctioning. You couldn't 
reserve a place. And so I was just jumping around for, to whatever available Airbnb that I had reserved before, plus hotels was like three hotels and three Airbnbs. And so this is too much of a hassle. And so I'll go to the easiest country, a uh, low cost country that doesn't have a excessive COVID regulations. And that was Portugal. So I went to Portugal for two months, Porto, Portugal. And then after two months, that was the limit of my time in the European Union. So I had to leave the European Union. So I flew to England and went to Cornwall, England. So then my expenses rose because England's really expensive. Uh, so far, <coughs> so far um, at that point, I didn't know what I was going to do. So I flew back. I decided to fly back to California, and uh, my plan was to apply for a Spanish or Portuguese residence visa. But the process takes four to six months. It's a lot of documents, and you have to do it in the United States. And at the time, uh, well, also currently as well, the economy really sucks in the United States. Uh, apartments which had previously been... $2,000 are now $3,000 per month <laughs> or more up to like 5,000, just one bedroom apartments. It's really difficult to buy a car because of the supply chain issues. Um, even used cars are selling at astronomical prices. It's, so I thought it's not going to be easy to spend six months in California. And by the time I get my residence visa, I will have spent probably... Sixty to seventy thousand dollars, and then I'll that will defeat the purpose of getting a residence permit in a cheaper country like Portugal and Spain. So I'd probably have to be in Portugal, Spain, or Spain for a year, probably a year and a half, to make up for those six months I spent in California. So I defeated the purpose, and I thought, ah, eh, screw this. But I do want to go back to Europe, and. Uh, so I came back to Poland and got a student visa. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm obviously still um, missing Ukraine in my life there. Since I'd spent two and a half years there. I left a $1,000 guitar there. I left about $600 worth of clothing and some appliances. And uh, I was renting an apartment, so... I don't own any property there, but I was renting. Um, I really want to go back, but it seems too, it's too dangerous, especially with the recent drone attack. A lot of my friends, both foreigners and Ukrainians, have returned to it. As, uh, and, th and then recently, a lot more are leaving, so people are going back and forth. And I think a lot of people are going to leave now because of the recent attack and... So it's an unusual situation, but that's what I've been doing.